Welcome back to another episode of the Higher Level Podcast. As always, I'm joined by head coach James Dillon. And on the coaches <laughs> on the couch as well tonight, we have Craig Spider Mott McIntosh. Uh, thanks for coming on, Craig. So we've got you in Cheers here because you, you've been obviously a very, very busy man recently in the, the World Day Grappling. So can you tell us a wee bit about what you've been doing, where you've been competing? I definitely. Um, just been having a lot of fun with it lately. Um, trying to test myself, trying, just trying to break into this kind of, see where you fall, just the same thing that I've done with MMA, just try to answer the questions yourself, where do you fall in and how good are you and these kind of things and I think with grappling, I've never really went against somebody where I've thought to myself, well, I couldn't have beat them on my day, do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And I think, uh, I think when, whenever you feel like that, it just makes you want to train harder, no. you know? So I've always, uh, I've always felt that every match I've had, you know, especially when it's been guys that have maybe been meant to be a better level than you or whatever. Then you're like, no, actually, I train with some pretty good guys. So that's that's what you remember. You know, you remember that. And I think a lot of people would have seen that with Stevie's fight there against Paddy. Yeah. A lot of people had Stevie as an underdog in that match, and uh, he clearly wasn't. He? I don't yeah. think he was in bother at any point. So, um, the last thing I done, I was I was over. My friend Jeremy was over. Um, for the Dublin 10th Planet Dublin camp and uh, so I wanted to go see him you know I was just like I'm going to go see him get a catch up see if he's getting on and uh, Jeremy, was ni- Jeremy was nice enough to actually let me do the camp for free so I knew there was a lot of good guys out there it was like Gio Martinez Boogeyman um, Ben Eddie was out there Jeremiah Vance a bunch of good like uh, good black belts out there so um, I just wanted to go out and see Jeremy and get a crack with me to be honest but Aye. then when I was out there I found out that Naga was on so I was like, it was a uh, wee Lewis Penny actually messaged me and said, you're doing Naga when you're out there. And I thought, oh fuck, if Naga's on, I'm, I'm not going to go to Ireland and no day it, you know what I mean? Um, and I was checking, the, I checked the, the divisions out to see what the, the the divisions were like. Usually I'll have a look and if there's black belts in the Masters one, I'll, I'll do the Masters one. And if mm. there's, because you can see on Smooth Comp, you know, what guys' records are and stuff like that as well. But because there was like there was a bunch of good guys in the in the adult and there was a bunch of good guys in the the masters, I was like I'll do both at the same time. So um, I jumped in and I done done both of the the matches and it was it was a really cool experience to be honest. The seminars and stuff were cool, um, but the the competition was cool. I had a bunch of loads and loads of support. So you had all the tenth fan at Amsterdam boys. Uh, shout out to Emad um, Emadness on Instagram. He's a good guy. So he's like the head coach of the Amsterdam mob. And um, the Ireland boys were there. Tenth fan at Dublin boys. We went out for a crack with all them. Obviously, I'm sober. They're all getting pissed. It was a good <laughs> laugh kind of scene there. Uh, just being out with boy Irish boys in Ireland was quite cool. And then uh, there was. Uh, Obviously, my American pals were there and I got to kind of know Jeremiah and that a wee bit better. I got to know Ben a wee bit better when they were there. And I got, it was good spending time with, with Jeremy as well because he's always he's always really looked after me every time I've been out in California. He's always like made a point of going out for dinner and things like that Aye. to make you feel welcome. And uh, So I it was just good, good kind of getting over there and I was getting a chance to compete in front of him as well. And... Uh, we went. We done that. Had my matches, um, and I, I felt brilliant in all my matches. And I've I've been I've been training really hard. I was, I was training a lot with Stevie for before he done Polaris, and uh, I done a thing where I just trained for four four weeks straight with a day's rest just to try and get myself because I was really getting g'd up for this fight that was maybe coming up, and just try to get myself back into shape for that. Um, I was feeling probably the best I've ever felt in my life, to be honest. Uh, I jumped, so I, I jumped in. I just thought, right, I'm going to see if fitness is a problem here or what. I was doing both matches at once, and uh, I submitted everybody except for the guys. Both finals, I submitted everybody on the way to the the finals in both the categories. Um, but in the final, I lost in points and won to the black belt guy. He, he, he scored a takedown. It wasn't even a take. I stuffed his take down and pulled a guillotine. Actually, but it was it was just tactically stupid for me because mm-hmm. had I like stuffed it and just waited maybe three seconds longer, they wouldn't even have scored it as a take down. They scored the guillotine, so I would have won. <laughs> so it was just like really marginal mistake for me mm-hmm. um, because if you go with the take down and, atta- and attack the submission, that scores as a take down. But if you stuff the take down and then you know, then you pull a guillotine, then you'll score for the submission attempt in Nagarul set. So, 
uh, I just made a slight tactical error and like probably went for the guillotine too quick. Maybe me stuffing the takedown, I blocked the takedown, and then I thought, I've got his neck here, dive for the guillotine, and they scored it as a takedown in the last like 15, 20 seconds, you know? So he, yeah. the guy beat me, like, they didn't even score a full takedown because I, they knew I had the neck wrap, so they, they gave him one point for it, so he beat me 1-0 uh, in the point. Is that, is that a bit frustrating, that? I well, do you know it was good because I was pissed right off. You know, I was like fucking raging, but I still had my adult final. Right. So like, there's no fucking way that I'm losing this adult final. You know, um, and I and I pretty much done the the same thing to the guy in the final. It, it was a, uh, pretty nearly every match in the adult category was an SPG guy, which is SPG guy, SPG guy, SPG guy um, for different SPGs. And I had an SPG guy in the final. Uh, he was for the the main one. Um, and he had good wrestling and stuff, so it was a, it was a, a wee bit, wee bit uh, a boring match. We both tried to wrestle each other. I was trying to counter wrestle him, try to snap him down and stuff. And um, I, got, I scored in the last seconds to to get the the win. So yeah, so I won that one. I got another belt, so I was happy at that. Um, and all my other performances were good. I was a leg lock, three guys caught a, a nice uh, guillotine for side control and a necktie. So. It was funny, I because all the, all the boogeyman was teaching his seminar in on neckties, and uh, a few that a bunch of obviously ten planet black belts were there, and they were like, "Fucking, uh, you missed that seminar, but I see you didn't need any help for your necktie." And I was like, "Aye, cheers, man." Uh, you should, you should maybe, me. you should, uh, you, you should be coming quite linked with the necktie. Aye, uh, I uh, just, just one of the things you mess about with for years, you know. Aye, um, and it just, it just comes a lot more in competition. It's not even that I'm like searching for it or that. It's just people shoot. I've got quite good takedown defence and I sprawl and then I catch it and usually it's there or there's a few different setups you can get it for but um, it's just one of the things sometimes you just get to shoot obviously I'm, it's, it's a high percentage one for me but like I've got a lot, a lot of other moves that it's, I like when I get hit my other moves a lot of the time because like mm -hmm. full other systems do you know what I mean that I've learned, I've been working for like eight, nine, ten years do you know what I mean I've been doing them for eight, nine, ten years and they work on everybody pretty much and they're pretty foolproof but just sometimes in competition maybe you don't, don't get to that spot or maybe you don't feel relaxed enough in that position yet to to really put it on guys you know is that is that something as well that if I get, say you get known for like you've got Danaher's guys that are known for obviously leg locks and stuff mm. like that if you're known for a certain move or people get familiar or know you for that then they're maybe so worried about that that it opens up other things well the neck stuff opens up the leg stuff all the time Aye. if guy, if I get in half guard guys are so scared for my neck stuff they're like way back and then right. Uh, you can just jump onto the leg because they've got no barriers to the legs at that point so you can often just slip through onto the leg a lot of the time if you can get to like top half guard or whatever mm -hmm. you know but it's relying on that so I it definitely helps with other stuff but then you've just got to keep evolving it's like it's actually I think it's actually good to be out there with what a day like because I actually quite like people I like that's why I wear the necktie thing because I'm like right I'm, if, if, if I've got a t-shirt on that says uh, Scottish necktie then the guys are going to be expecting the next time we have to work some other stuff probably, you know, and get some submissions other ways. So it's helping right. me get better. Like, cause like the winning thing is great and it's great to win. You always want to finish and stuff, but it's also better to get to develop other moves and, and work other moves in competition. So I feel like if you wear that banner, then it's giving you, it's giving you less a chance to win that match, but it means you have to get better in other areas. Yes, I guess I as I think it's a bit improving and it's something I'm assuming you must have seen, James, since Craig's gets so involved in the uh, BJJ side of things. How, how big a development have you seen and where he's come? Um, he was always natural, like, even for the start before I, I trained with him, was, everybody knew he was dangerous with submissions. I think he even let like, arm bars off his back like, really, really early on. Uh, so, that was probably my first move. <laughs> was, like, you could, you'd see him a couple of times and, and you'd know like this guy's got a good arm bar off his back. So, But his game, his game's evolved, it's, it's really systematic now, which it should be at, at, at brown belt level anyway. Like he's, you can ask him what he's good at and he can tell you whereas if you ask like a blue belt or a white belt what you're good at they, they, they don't really know so much um, it has totally developed but, but there's, there's Craig and a, a bunch of the other guys like Stevie and, and Cammy Donnelly and stuff have just brought the level of grappling on throughout the whole team in the gym and they're, they're almost like specialists in that area um, and it, it just helps it brings everybody on eh? but it, it's cool watching them develop um, we are we've always kind of proud of our, our, our pride ourselves on everybody being individual so Craig's game's completely different to everybody else's in here mm -hmm. there's some crossover with some of the guys with, with bits and pieces but 
it's, it's like he's got a game that suits his personality. He's got a game that suits his physical attributes, his size and his shape and stuff. And it's cool. Like that, that's the coolest thing about martial arts in general. Like you can you can find stuff that'll work for for everybody. Aye, and I I guess for you as well when you're coming into the gym. Um, you rolling with guys and stuff you must see the guys progressing as well as your levels go up you're almost helping guys levels come up as well I love it man I, I, I love everything about Jiu Jitsu I love when like like we Logan for example I love when I've no rolled with Logan for six months or so and I come in and he's like got whew, he's just got so much better do you know what I mean I remember that happened with Jason Woods one time I was like maybe I didn't roll with him for three or six months or so and then he's just completely better like it was, it was it, you can feel folk shift their belt level mm-hmm. and you're like oh that's what's happened there Aye. you know and uh, that's brilliant it's amazing and obviously it's a testament to the coaching in here as well that you'll see guys shoot up that fast but James will probably tell you that himself that you know, like when we were starting out it was, you were scarce to try and get bits of information mm-hmm. Um well, James, you were what, about five to ten years ahead of me, so it was a bit even harder for you. Right? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of you're just kind of guessing a lot of the stuff, eh? but mm-hmm. it's not like now where you've got access to everyone and and everybody. Um, we were using like we used like the Gracie tapes and stuff like that, the original ones and VHS, and you'd get a mat and a, a video on a telly in the garage and, and playing video for five minutes and then try <laughs> to rep something and and stuff like that Scott but. always tells me you're training the old Kelvin Hall today yeah. uh, that, was, that was like my first jiu-jitsu coach Scott trained with James I think right. uh, originally in I started with Scott as well eh? what, oh you trained together really yeah. eh? yeah. um, but he's always asking for you every time I see him he's always like I tell James I'm asking for him yeah. and he's a, he's a really good guy um, but I started training with him like really early on uh, I started training with him way before anybody in my area had done jiu-jitsu so in the gi, travelling through, I bought myself a gi off the internet and drove through myself all the time. And the only reason I went to Scott was because I knew there was other jiu-jitsu places, but because I was an MMA fighter, mm-hmm. I thought, right, I don't want to be affiliated to any MMA, MMA teams. I don't want to be going somewhere because it kind of cuts off fights for me. Aye. So I just thought, because I was already affiliated to an MMA team, so I thought, right, I'll just go train with a jiu-jitsu club that's not affiliated to any mm-hmm. MMA team. And then it doesn't really affect anything for me, you know? Um so I started training with him years ago and uh, when I when I really started, but you, you can't just train. I honestly believe in my heart of hearts, you can't just train in a straight jiu-jitsu club. I think, it's, I, I think if you train in a straight jiu-jitsu club and try and compete MMA, you're, you're limiting yourself big time. I, uh, I have heard you saying something in the past. I'm, I don't want to misquote you here, but you said there was a difference and you could see the difference in guys that were straight jiu-jitsu guys or guys that were uh, training jiu-jitsu but were also MMA fighters and, into, yeah. and t- for what I took for that what you're meaning is so I'm not saying guys tap quicker but do you feel MMA MMA fighters who are doing jiu-jitsu are maybe more likely to tough out and try and get out of something or I'm trying to remember exactly what you I, said but um, I'll probably try and explain it the best way I can Um so for me personally, mm. I'd, all, I'd only trained at jiu-jitsu clubs and I'd, although my original club at Hostile Territory was a judo club, um, so that gave me quite good defence. Yeah. And that's where I probably got my submission defence because all my training partners were about 100-odd kilos and they all just wanted to crush you and hold you down. So that, that made me pretty tough and gave me defence. I started getting quite technical with jiu-jitsu when I started travelling to Scott, but... I thought like being on the bottom was all right, you know. Mm-hmm. When I went and started training with, with James, um, which has got to be a while ago now, it's probably about six years ago or something like that, maybe even longer now. Ah, yes. um, it was f- 2013, about May 2013, mm-hmm. it would have been. So it's uh, aye, that's like six and a bit years ago. Um, and when I went uh, through to James's, people, people that hadn't enrolled me, even after a year of being in, in James's classes, just seen the change because it was just top position and I just got much more positional mm-hmm. and, uh, and and pressure and just posture like that was probably the biggest thing I learned for, and you see it with guys like Turner and you know what I mean it's just like unbelievable eh? just different posture like until you feel somebody that's got that kind of posture you're like oh and then that whole time they would actually be punching you mm-hmm. so I just think it's always important to keep that in mind that there is guys that can do that that can just posture and trying to break down somebody's posture and how and just that there's so many different levels to posture mm-hmm. you know, like postures uh, it just seems like something really basic you say oh posture you know but there's actually guys that have got incredible posture and Aye. It's, I guess it's just something you have to be aware of the difference between straight BJJ and then using that in MMA because there's positions obviously where you can get really hurt in MMA 
mm-hmm. that you wouldn't obviously in, in straight Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I'm I'm a big believer in that. I think uh, I think that you, you should train with fighting in mind. You know, right. and I, I think it holds me back that I do that for mm-hmm. for just Jiu Jitsu competition. But it keeps the martial arts element to it, and it keeps the real element to it. That if you're no bearing in mind that this guy could be punching you in the head, you're just you're taking away if what it's all about for me. Well, if you, I suppose if you think about it, that's the whole well what Brazilian Jiu Jitsu was started for. I guess for the Gracies, yeah. the whole point of it was it was it was more aimed at uh, I guess street fighting would be the thing. Um, do you think we've moved away from that a bit in uh, straight Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? Yeah, I, I mean it's went it's went wild really mm-hmm. and, and it's not a bad thing it's fine if that's what people are into and that's what they want to do um, but for me I, I fully believe like it should be a self de- a, a real self defence mas- uh, self defence martial art and um, it, it should you should always keep the thought of fighting in, in mind you know Aye. that what if that guy could punch you you know uh, so I, I find it that an MMA style I think, I think I think it's just more realistic I think it's better I think MMA style of grappling it kind of it focuses you to work on both takedown defence mm-hmm. and you know takedowns in your own in your own way as well I think it uh, keeps the importance of being on the bottom um, and and being on the top you know and, 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 and what the the risk reward is of each position yeah. you know so I, I just think it's a uh, it's the right way to look at it. And, and do you think we see a lot of we see a lot of MMA fighters moving over, and a lot of MMA fighters are competing in Jiu Jitsu. Obviously, Stevie Ray, mm-hmm. uh, his biggest example. I know Stevie's competing again, isn't he? Is it is it Grapple Fest, Stevie, or he's, S- he's S- on SGI? SGI. SGI. Um, but for the other side, I heard. Uh, I don't know if you maybe caught this. I think it was on a fight companion. Eddie, Eddie Bravo was talking mm-hmm. about Jiu Jitsu guys coming across the MMA and maybe using combat Jiu Jitsu as a sort of stepping stone. Any thoughts on that? I'm not a fan of it to be honest no, right. I think it's like slapping slapping eh? mm-hmm. I think there's a big difference between getting slapped and punched I know people say all about the bass route and mm-hmm. that and stuff and like that's fine but like an elbow is just totally different to Aye. I, I, I think like fine if that's what if, if that makes you feel if that makes somebody feel like they, they're in a fighter or that is closer to being real but I don't know it's just it's not for me I think like if you're going to get a fight get in a real fight and if you're going to do jiu-jitsu just do jiu-jitsu Aye, so you think if you're trans- what about yourself James you think if you're transitioning for straight BJJ and MMA do you think there is a goal between or do you think you just need to get into a gym and, and experience it I think the, the goal between is amateur MMA mm. um, like an iron like mistakes and stuff there. I don't like the combat jiu-jitsu stuff either to be honest I, I think Eddie Bravo set up the EBI thing to try and kind of promote 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu um, which it did pretty early on but then when the Danahar guys came over and started wrecking everybody mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's <laughs> kind of backfired <laughs> it's, made, it's made like that gym for New York the most mm-hmm. famous gym in the world with the, the highest paid no. Jiu-Jitsu guys are there now and so it's like he's almost like done away with EBI and he's like they combat Jiu-Jitsu because Gordon Ryan probably doesn't want slapped in the face for 20 grand <laughs> when he can we can make more money doing like grappling super fights but I think uh, they'd, they'd be better just going to amateur MMA with, with their jiu-jitsu and stuff and then, then transitioning over there. But it looks like Gordon Ryan, he's he's making the transition, isn't he? I believe he spoke about it. About Gary Conan's it already doing really he's well. He's doing it in one, I1FC. Yep. Again, John Gracie, obviously in the UFC. UFC. And I think as well with 1FC. I think, he will, I think Gordon Ryan will be, will be over eventually. Like um, he's got, he's, I think he's got some goals still to hit. Aye. He's talking about like, winning world championships in the gi and stuff. Mm. Um, but he'll be, fr- he'll be frightening when he does crossovers because those guys cross over well and they take their time out. Uh, there's videos and stuff of Gary Tone and hitting pads and stuff like that maybe two or three years ago when he was in at his peak as a, a no gi grappler mm. he was still obviously playing the long game training training tie boxing and, and whatever else he'll struggle to pass a test though that's the one thing I would say there's a lot of dirty dirty motherfuckers in that jiu-jitsu like <laughs> I mean pro- probably I don't know if it's even more than MMA to be honest I, I, I'm just going off I'm no I think I think there is obviously with the but when people can get away with it they're going to it seems like they're going to do it you want to so honestly see some of the boys I've fucking went against lately are just juiced out their absolute head it's unbelievable yeah, and there was one guy it was just laughable eh? it was just muscles on muscles aye and <laughs> is, is it off is it a bit annoying when you see a guy and you know because I mean 
I think you probably get early years you can get pretty good at telling what guys are what guys are on it and what guys aren't um, is it a bit annoying when you know you, you know you, a guy's there aye one, one guy really annoyed me he fucking he, he ran to the toilet and he hid in the toilet during the match uh, before the match the guy got called to have his match with me and I, I, had, I had tapped everybody and I was feeling fit but the guy was like big muscly guy so he was exhausted because he had had tough matches and he ran to the toilet and hid and his coach was like oh he'll be back in five minutes he took about 20 minutes in the toilet so he came back rejuvenated and then and then went but I thought to myself well, you've just been called for the match you've went and got 20 minutes recovery because mm-hmm. you're, you're so muscular and then I think it was a nil-nil we ended up having a nil-nil match and mm-hmm. they, they gave him the decision for it and I just thought to myself that's no great Ken. And, and just the fact that he was roided up it kind of I know he'd maybe a bit more in that situation, but I've went against a few guys like that. There was there no announcement uh, recently about uh, they were going to do a bit more st- stricter testing in jiu-jitsu? I think it was at the IB... IB Jiu-Jitsu World, uh, it's no uh, key. Yeah, it's in December. That'll be at the comp, but they're easy to beat. Like, mm-hmm. most of the steroids have got, like, a half-life of, like, maybe three days or seven days and stuff, so they need to be, like, absolutely stupid to get caught with that type of testing. Well, I suppose it, as I said, it was a it was an intelligence test, same as early yeah. MMA. Yeah. But then I guess <clears throat> financially, for a, for a money standpoint, putting the strict test in, there's just no the same sort of money as. as <laughs> okay, so the IBJJF are bound to have some amount of money. They charge you fucking thirty seven quid just to change your your belt level, <laughs> on their on their on their uh, for an admin fee. It's ridiculous, honestly. Just, just a money making scheme. Ah, they, they, they'll not be about. I reckon ten fifteen years they'll not be about. Do you think as well the sports moving towards the? Do you think more people are more interested in the submission only side of things because it just makes the matches a bit more exciting obviously less stalling Aye, IBGGF's got a lot of prestige but mm. um, the rule set sucks the scoring sucks and the, to be honest the matches are, are, are quite boring they, they ban too many moves uh, mm-hmm. it's just it's, 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 I suppose it is good in, in a sense that it's got clear direction and it's well organised and things like that but I don't know, I just think uh, I think Sublin is more fun to watch usually. No, no, and it seems like there's more competition now. Um Everywhere. out there. There's more shot, but obviously you've been you've been competing competing a lot. And with regards to yourself and the uh, competitions you've been uh, competing on, has there been any standout moments for you? Anything that sort of stood out over the last few months? Uh and the sub only stuff. Yeah. Aye, well um after I done Nag, I done the Actually, I, got, I, got, <laughs> I had this match in Grappling Industries, right? So mm-hmm. um, you, you get the round robin format, right? So you get two matches. And I went against this uh, this big Polish dude, right? Mm-hmm. And and the gi. And he fucking done me. Just absolutely done me. Done me like, I don't know, 6-0 or something like that, right? Um, I thought, right, fucking here we go. I've got to have another match with this prick. And he was really good, <laughs> eh? Um, and then he, he actually... Uh, Actually, he done me again, but during the last minute or two of the match, I started to take over and I was fitter than him. So I was like, thank fuck him, at least I've got one attribute on him, I'm a wee bit fitter than him. Um, he was stronger than me, absolutely. And uh, I just thought, all right, if I can be a wee bit more composed, I put a pace on him, keep working him, then I can actually beat this guy. But he'd, he'd beat me 2 now anyway, so there was no more matches to be had in the gi. Mm-hmm. So that was it, he wiped me out. Um, but I knew if I got to the finals, I would get him later on and the the nogi mm-hmm. so I thought all oh, day I'm pissed off I'm thinking I'm going to fucking get this guy later like I was raging eh? I was like I'm going to get this guy later on and uh, uh, I went up against him and I, really close to neck time in the, la- in the first minute mm-hmm. and then he, he actually reversed position and then he done me even worse he done me like 10 now <laughs> in the nogi and I was just like <laughs> fuck I was like certain I was going to beat this guy Aye. And in my head, I was absolutely certain I was going to beat him. Um, but I thought, right, I definitely can get this guy in certain positions. I just need to be careful that when I get position, don't try and submit him. Just control him and just slowly cook him. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And I could see he was getting more and more tired. So I was right, so I've got a couple of things on him. and I, So I had to get him again, round robin format. So I managed to, to, to beat him and I beat him like with an advantage, nil nil with an advantage, Aye. right? So... Um, and the rematch, so I was like, "Fuck yes, yeah, beat him." Felt brilliant because I, you know, I, I remember going into the fourth match. He'd beat me. Th- he's beat me three times at this point. I remember going into the fourth match. I'm thinking, 
why do I even like in my head I believe I can beat him eh? and I'm saying why do I even believe I can beat him I've actually no got <laughs> really anything to base that There's off a two way dialogue in your head aye, aye I'm thinking like in my head I fully believed I could beat him like, going into it I was a big smile going into it I was like I'm going to beat him I'm going to beat him but when I, when I think logically I'm like well I've not really got much to, to base that off because of, he's beat me three times in a row aye. you know but I still believed I could beat him and I did I, I beat him yeah, just by an advantage and then um, so then we had to, the final uh, with a re- obviously one one a piece so we had the final in the nogi because we're one dr- one in uh, one each so uh, and then I submitted them in the final so beat beat them on points and then submitted them so I was up like four now or something on points and then beat them so it was almost almost losing as badly as you did at the start mm-hmm. and coming back and getting that at the end it just didn't just make it that much sweeter it was just ah, it was just really I had a lot of other matches that day but that was I'd done the absolute and stuff as well the no absolute and I was actually wiped everybody out in the absolute I was feeling brilliant in the absolute never really got tested but that that guy uh, really was tough as nails well, what I didn't realise is as well as being like a brown belt he's a black belt now but as well as being a, a black belt um, he also had wrestled for Poland at, right. at national level so I was I was thinking he was a gi player and then when I went out to wrestle I made the mistake of just overly pressuring him when he had an overhook and he's launched me nearly knocked me out with a throw I landed head first got the flash and everything I was like fucking hell pop scramble back to my feet but I can remember like that guy's strong man and and he had good solid wrestling kind of bridges and stuff as well so uh, it was just try it was just try to try to hold on a big bear but I respected that guy a lot after it's probably one of my favourite matches I've ever had Um, is is that one of the fun things about the uh, about uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu as well you get in there against guys and you don't you might not necessarily know that much about them so you're almost mm-hmm. finding out about them in the match Aye. getting to know them it's brilliant you, f- you feel them out in the match and you get a wee bit of an idea people sometimes come up to you and try and feel you out a bit you know what I mean they try and Aye. like find out what you're good at and stuff before it oh what, what, what are you doing I just didn't usually say anything until after it but eh uh, Aye, it's, it's fun kind of, it's, it's, and especially like see, the, see if you're competing at no gi expert mm-hmm. um, what I find is that you don't know what belt anybody is either. Aye, you know what I mean? So you, you sometimes, I remember I had this wee kid and he was like a blue belt and the absolute, the the expert, but you can choose to enter the the expert if you want to. Do you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. Whether you're white belt or a blue belt, you, you just, it's just a wee bit foolish. But this wee boy had actually got to the semi-finals as a blue belt and he weighed about 60 kilo. And I was looking at him before, I thought, this guy's, this guy's a bit weird. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, he does not look like he's going to be able to do anything at all to me. So I was like extra cautious with him because I thought, there's something really weird about this wee guy, you know? And uh, I could see he was like desperate to play leg locks because some of these young guys now are just hammering the leg locks mm-hmm. and maybe they're lacking in their other parts of the game, but they're getting a lot of success because if they can just get that entry with their legs, they're actually putting higher belts away, Aye. you know? Um, so this wee guy had made it all the way to the semis. He had tapped two brown belts on the way to the in the absolute in the way at the semis as a blue belt, which is brilliant for him. But like once I passed his legs, he had nothing. No, he had nothing at all. Which is, but he felt like a blue belt once I passed his legs, or he felt like even you know round about that area. And then, uh, uh, so that that was quite a cool match. You never know what you're getting, or you could be getting a black belt, but you know pretty much as soon as you feel the grip with a black belt, Aye. you know you grip up and you go, all right, this is a black belt. Or, no, this, a, this is this is a at least a, a solid brown belt. It's mad that you can get that for just a, for just a feel of a guy. Is that mm. something you you notice as well when you're gra- when you're uh, rolling with a guy? You can kind of feel the, where the uh, level is in terms of their belt. You can tell pretty early. It's it's like the grips, but then like the pressure sometimes or the flow or just how the transition and stuff like that. Like you can you can get a read off people like um, just just for what you feel off them. Yeah. You get it wrong sometimes too, like that Pierre guy. Yeah, I was like, I was like certain that was a black, you know, he's a black belt, and mm-hmm. yeah, he's a black. He's belt. just one. Uh, <laughs> we had a, a guy here for TriStar Pierre. He done a set. He done a, a seminar tour of Europe, but um, mm-hmm. he's a, he's he's a purple belt, but he's not a purple. Well, he's yeah, been yeah. a purple belt for a while, but he just won the Pan Ams at purple belt there mm-hmm. in New York last week. But I think some of these guys at the elite level, they're staying at that belt level for a while to to hit certain goals, but. Mm-hmm. He, he was absolutely excellent. Is that almost any to get their self to a level where they feel they're ready then to move up? I think some of them just want to win certain tournaments. At right. belt, like they want to be a world champion at, at mm-hmm. blue belt, at purple, at brown, at black or, or whatever. But, um, but it's, it just depends what their goals are. It helps probably like where 
seminars and that if you can see I'm a world champ at this or aye, you know I mean aye, like aye. if they're doing seminars it probably it's a selling point, hel- right. helps that wee bit get, get some kind of their name out there maybe get some that get someone to bigger submission only shows when they want to do that that kind of thing because sometimes uh, you, know, you need to make a bit of noise if you want on the matches like to even get on grapple fest that Chris Thompson always laughs at me I, I pestered the life out of him and I, I messed him I'll go against absolutely anybody you've got <laughs> and I think he just thought it was funny so he put me on it you know aye. And uh, I was messaging him, eh? and he was like, "Ah, right, okay, we'll give this guy Isaac." Um, that Isaac dude was one of the best guys I've ever went against. He's like uh, one of the Danaher guys. He was just relentless pace, and it was uh, it's a good reminder for me because you know I always remember that in MMA. You know, when I was fighting MMA, I'd always knew that your cardio had to be your weapon. Mm-hmm. You know, like you need to have cardio as a weapon, as an extra weapon. So not just your your Muay Thai, your boxing, your Jiu Jitsu, but your cardio needs to be a weapon as well. Some guys win fights on just cardio alone, Aye. and they're not even that good a fighter. If you're durable and you've got good cardio, you're, you're probably going to win more fights than you lose. To be honest, yep. um, and I just forgot that with Jiu Jitsu. I never really took it serious because nobody had ever been able to put a pace on me before. So in all the matches I'd had, I'd always controlled the pace, but he was able to put a pace on me, and I thought, oh. I forgot about that <laughs> and then I was like I'm not letting that happen again and I, I started really working my cardio hard no. I guess it is sometimes you, you need to take the, the losses and I guess the same applies in all combat sports sometimes the losses are, are, are the biggest learning well the biggest learning experiences for you mm-hmm. maybe remind you in areas that you maybe need to still focus on and stuff like that as uh, well I think that was a good match I think like uh, I think I got to show my defence which I never really get to do very Aye. much you know usually I'm attacking people so it was good to, to show my defence um, which is probably one of my strongest things, I would say. Aye. I think I'm really, really, really hard to tap. Um, if it's, you know, probably need to put me out to to, to get me in a, a hold off <laughs> way more than I should and stuff. <laughs> Hence why I'm in the position Aye. I'm in now. It, but, uh, for, for your point of view in terms of what he's, doing, what, um, what he's just said there, is that something that you don't like as a, as a head coach? You'd rather the guys just when they're in a, a position maybe no let it go too far? Uh, aye. I I like guys that I, it, it depends where they're in their development if it's competition yeah. and stuff but in the gym I, I prefer guys tap tap off and we we just had Stevie going to Polaris here with Paddy Pimlet knowing that in eight weeks he's to go to Singapore and fight yep. Michael Johnson and you, you don't really want to bring the subject up but like if, if he gets you in a submission fucking tap because you're aye. you're getting paid you get paid like he didn't get paid a lot for Polaris. He got mm-hmm. paid hundreds of pounds, whereas you're about to make thousands of pounds yeah. mm-hmm. uh, on a UFC card, which is how he makes his living. I was like, if, don't be stubborn. If he catches you when and it doesn't fucking matter. It's a grappling match. You tap it. We need. I need you healthy for for how you make your money. But there's some guys are going to be stubborn. But you, you need to go through a you need to go through a phase early on where you can learn your limitations with the submissions like you need to sit in them you, need, you don't want guys tapping to techniques early on because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. that becomes a habit you you want them to resist and get comfortable in them to an extent but they also need to know like if I don't tap now this is going to break um, Aye, in your... and I'm going to boot training for whatever eight weeks so I'm, I'm my development's stopping the rest of the guys on the mat are losing a good training partner my mm-hmm. momentum gets gets broke and then I have to come back so I, I would prefer the tap um, but there is some guys Craig, Craig knows how much he can take yeah. like mm-hmm. with, with submissions mo- like he's, he's been doing it long enough he knows like there's a danger something's going to break now I'll, I'll, I will tap but some yeah. guys are more stubborn than ours definitely with my students I try, like I'll say to them you know tap you know mm-hmm. and uh, use myself as an example because some of the worst mistakes I've ever made was no tapping and just being stubborn and yeah I've always been quite bendy with my limbs, so I've always had a lot to give with my limbs uh, until I didn't, uh, you know, aye, until, aye. until I didn't. And then, like, the worst injury I've got um, is to do with no tapping in mm. the gym. It's stupid as anything, you know, um, to the point where sometimes, you know, my arm actually goes regularly, goes numb in competition, can't feel yeah. my arm. Um, actually, the last time I trained for a fight, um, my arm was just going numb pretty much every time I tried to spar. Um, to the point where I can't even lift it you know it's hanging down so I've got one arm um, and that's just for no tapping an arm bar at one point and I, I did escape the arm bar I actually got out of it you mm-hmm. know but I got a, a ripped my arm in the process of getting out of it um, so I oh brilliant you got a, an arm bar in the gym you know, it's stupid as anything <laughs> do you know what I mean Aye. you could also Aye. go out of it by tapping you know but I was trying to do an escape and the escape worked but it, it ripped in the, on the escape and that was about five six years ago 
And yeah. uh, you know, it's just getting wash and wash and wash. Like uh, it goes numb more regularly. Actually, since the big, <laughs> since the big creation guy fixed my shoulder, it's got a lot better, mind you. Aye. It's no, it's, it's oh, no. Oh right, aye, aye, aye. I remember that was uh, was that that was in holiday. Uh, can aye, we play? Uh, a drunk creation guy was it? Aye, was it was not in Charlie. Oh right, aye. okay. So no, just drunk. Three in the afternoon in Ibiza Beach, and he just come out of me and he says, uh, "I was just sitting there and um, take it." I was, I was with Olivia actually we were I went to the beach and we walked past I was like right, I'm not going to do nothing can I do some uh, just do a quick workout in the pull up bars and that so I went down and I'm just doing all the pull ups and all that shit and um, I was trying to stretch myself off because it really gave me bother at this point my shoulder was really gave me bother I couldn't it was getting to the point where I couldn't sleep but it was agony and I've, I tried everything Thai massages cupping uh, needle therapy every type of avenue you can go down I tried and some of it worked short term but nothing had ever worked long term and uh, hadn't thrown if you watch any of my MMA fights never really thrown a right hand because it you know um, so it's given me a, a lot of bother for, for years and years and years and uh, this guy sitting and he's doing like a kind of crossfit type routine himself kind of stretching off and like muscle ups and stuff yep. big guy as well so I was quite, I was like quite curious because I was quite impressed at the size of him that he was able to do all these uh, movements and I thought fair play to this guy and him and his pals are sitting having beers and uh, I think they've probably been on other stuff and uh, they're just doing the beach chilling so I went right I, I kind of copied him and I think he was kind of laughing at me copying him and I was trying to do the same move as him to see if I could do it it was like pulling yourself up and round and keeping your core stabilised and he was kind of like laughing at me as if to say like that's quite funny that you've done that and then he, he just kind of went over and he says you need to trust your shoulders man and I was like I can't make their fuck <laughs> and I said to him I can't make their fuck I can't trust my shoulders they're bad eh? and he went eh all right. Um, he, he says, "What's wrong with you?" And I was like, uh, "He says, oh, you're a fighter. I can tell." And I was like, "All right." He says, "I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a boxer. What was his name again, man?" Uh, oh, that's annoying. I should be able to remember that. He had a, he had a right Croatian name to. But, um, it wasn't he Boris, but it was something. Like <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't he Boris. It was something like Boris, but. Um, Boris the coked up oh, Croatian that's, that's so bad man that's so... Victor Victor hi I'm Victor Vic- hi I'm Victor you can tell he had learned his, uh, how to speak Cro- uh, English off American DVDs because like hey I'm Victor and uh, he, he goes I'll fix you in that and I wouldn't normally trust a random guy in the beach right but it's probably says, a good life motto it's yeah, you know, <laughs> probably a good life he motto says, he says you want me to fix you you know and I went uh, but before he actually asked that he says let me have a look at you and, and, and he named probably every by looking at my back right he named about every single injury I've had in the last right. uh, 10 years and he and couldn't have been anywhere right he's like you've got sciatica on your lower right back and named all these different things I think he was just like proper Sorry. full of Charlie do you know what I mean so he was on his A game <laughs> yeah, and he was, he was like re- full of Charlie so he was, he, was, he was just noticing everything and uh, he said ah, da, 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 da. and then he goes uh, he goes you want me to fix you I says, do you think you can? And he's like, ah, I think I can. Uh, he says, have you had any operations? I said, no. And he's like, right. He said, that's perfect. If you've had an operation, I can't fix you. And fair enough. So Olivia must have just been sitting like, Olivia was on the phone to her mum like, Craig's away with this giant creation guy and his <laughs> pals getting, he's pulling his arms and that apart on the, <laughs> the middle of the street. So she's probably just laughing her head off. <laughs> and uh, we went, went to, at least laid me down in the, the, the concrete bit. Um, I'm getting visuals here. Where everybody walks <laughs> on a towel, face down. You know what I mean? So I'm thinking, what's it? This boy just going to jump on my head. Because I, I'm pretty vulnerable at that point. I'm lying like totally in his, his put. He starts just doing all these different techniques to me. But really like near enough rip my arm with the socket. And he's got his foot on my shoulder and he's pow, pow, getting pulling the arm. And I'm hearing the pops and that. I'm like, what is he doing? And then he was pinching my spine and all this different stuff. Uh, he got to my arm and as soon as he touched I was like and he went oh he went that's completely gubbed like he's like you need an operation on that so for that arm bar so the arm part he's just like I can't do anything with that he said that needs operated on right away and he, he just told me that eh? um, he said it's completely detached I was like no that's fair enough um, and he fixed everything else <laughs> Why? Well, he fixed it. instantly I was like oh, shadow box and that felt brilliant <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and, and, then, and then he proceeded to try and sell me cocaine I didn't, I didn't even take drugs and he was like uh, he says if you or your friends ever need cocaine he says I'm Victor he says I'll put you in contact with my friend here and his two buddies come over and they're like here take this mobile number we take all the stuff we weigh it out and I'm like mate I'm here with my girlfriend I'm like, I'm, she's pregnant we're not, we're not here uh, today anything like that um, 
And I, it was just like, right, brilliant. So I got a wee picture of him and I said, your sound is in it. And I thought he was, I was wondering if he's wanting money or anything like that. And he didn't want money. He had the wee white bits in his lips. He was like, it's not, he just, it's, even see during that night, he was going, he's pulling on my arm. He's going, I love you, brother. You'll be good to fight after this. And that's what he's saying to me. And I'm like, this guy's bonkers, eh? Hey? Absolutely bonkers. He was right into it. And then uh, I fixed me up and he was like, when you go, pal, see you soon. <laughs> so I don't bother. You know, there's some wee dudes out there in a the corner shivering, going, I met Victor Tape in my story. Wasn't it like that? <laughs> ah, it wasn't as good as that. Right, mine's different. He was saying he was a boxer, that's what he's saying. He had big, gigantic hands. His hands were huge. So if he was a boxer, he's probably pretty good. But that's what else he was saying. He was like, uh, he just started, he just told me his whole business. He says, Yes, what I do is I've got a chiropractor business. I went to school for this shit four years. I've got a chiropractor. He's definitely on cocaine. He's telling me all this. He's like, I've got a chiro- uh, chiropractor business. Um, I went to school for four years and uh, all I do is I, I make my money and then I launder my money through my chiropractor business I come out to Ibiza I sell drugs for the season and then I come back and launder my money through my chiropractor business and I was just like oh fair play big Victor yeah. Foxy. I hope Victor's not watching this there's, awesome. there's, going to be a few, there's going to be a few Victors I know, I there's a few a few Victors right out there well I don't, I, that's that's quite an, an insane experience but at least if, it, if anything else it's, it's, it's helped the shooter but the, the, in terms of the arm I need to get surgery, at some point is, is that something you're, you're just is there going to be a time you're going to wait is you going to wait till after you're done with grappling or do you think now, you better now, get now, it now sorted now would be a good time now would be a good time obviously uh, you're you uh, becoming uh, a father I'm soon and taking a bit of time out of competition so um, now would be the perfect time I think uh, I'm still going to be training that's the only thing I'm still going to be training <coughs> but it, it might I've never really made use of any of the like tutorials or anything like that or on the internet mm-hmm. or any of that kind of stuff. It would maybe be a good time to get a bit geeky and start studying because I, I used to do that a lot with, with MMA in the early days. I used to watch loads and loads. Of, I used to watch every single UFC and I would rewind back. Anytime I seen a technique I didn't know, I would rewind it back and watch and see how did they do that. And like, right. That's where I, I learned most of my stuff because I kind of try to figure it out for myself before I joined James. Can That was a... Uh, that was a, the, the kind of lucky thing about going to somebody like James you've actually got somebody that's been in there put it on a practice for years and years and mm-hmm. years whereas see trying to find out stuff when you're like what 2011 in Scotland 2012 in Scotland it was a different world wasn't it? That, that was the best you were you were waiting to see guys like BJ Penn fight so you could see what the new techniques were mm-hmm. you were waiting to see guys like Anderson fight you know, nobody was throwing these front kicks to the face or that before Anderson right. uh, knocked the guy out where it was a lot of these techniques once you've seen them work you say oh that actually works and then you start practicing it putting it into practice and and that's when a lot of guys in gyms you're seeing the trends now happening where loads of guys switch stance but we've been switching stance for, for as long as as long as I've been at the gym yeah switching right. stance so, but you're only really starting to see that in the UFC guys doing it really well now you know Aye. even in boxing Lomachenko and that you're starting to see them, them doing it and yes they've been doing it for years but um, James has been training us today all these things for years so you've got wee guys in the gym that are probably early 20s that can strike equally well mm-hmm. for both stances and mix in the wrestling so they're not just strikers for both stances they're actually mixing in the wrestling as well I guess that comes back to just where the, where the sport's at at the moment because even if you look at some of, the, some of the amateur shows you go to obviously we'll talk a bit about Artie Combat um, show that you just competed on obviously James you had um, you had some fighters fighting there um, the levels are just continually evolving and getting better I think the last show we spoke a bit about obviously Sean Clancy and, and kids like that <laughs> it's you know crazy what I, mean? I spun it's, that kid not long ago he's frightening <laughs> I, like I said the last time the first time I seen him fight I, I was it was just hard to comprehend that he was 15 years old obviously at the time um, the other boys seen, you've got to the big twin brothers uh, yeah it was, <laughs> actually, it was actually it was one of the one of the, the Brock twins that Sean was fighting at the time mm-hmm, that's right um, yeah. it was, the, the levels are, are, are getting insane and in terms of Artie Combat itself the show that's uh, just been recently uh, what was your thoughts on the show I didn't get to see this one but it looked promotion wise from the outside the production looked good um, what was your thoughts on the show aye it was cool I love Art of Combat actually. Mm. Um, I kind of get a fucking win on it, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like my, my hoodoo show. Um, I, I kind of see me win on it, but um, it's a great show. Uh, mm-hmm. I've always liked it. I thought their first 2011 was the first time I fought there in March 2011. Yeah. Um, I like it. I like the setup, I like the way the crowd's looking at you. And they always pick good competitive matches on. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Aye, I like I like that combat. It's funny how things change though, because I, I think the last time when I first fought in there, I was selling like 120 tickets. I sold four this time. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody cares when you've been doing it for a long time, and you didn't you didn't, you didn't care either. You didn't want you didn't bother if people come and watch you. Like you do it for yourself, eh? you're not really bothered. Was you, was it good for you just to experience as well to go back back to Art of Combat? Because I quite like this. I don't know what your thoughts are of the setup. I think it's quite a nice setup. The mm. the, the way the Alhambra theatres it's a wee bit different to what we're used to in it's regional nice. shows like gym halls and I saw they'd changed the, the entrance for the mm-hmm. fighters as well they'd that go a cool. little walkway uh, for the fighters how, oh, how, but... how was that? I loved it aye aye uh, yeah, and you've probably seen I was happy as anything yeah. I was just really happy and, uh, the venue's class I think the changing rooms are only the best they're, a bit, they're a bit wee um, the ramping thing with the sparks and stuff was pretty cool but you <coughs> there's a wee kind of holding area up there next to the bar so by the time like Keir got on and stuff you're having to push oh, for getting cheeky and drunk, drunk people out the way uh, and, and stuff like that that's always been the same to be fair which is, right. isn't the best but it, it, it was good um, <laughs> I think the show started at 7 and it was done for 11 so it's always that's always a good thing eh? I, was, I was ready to burst something I was happened? walking my wee bread out and there was a guy at the bar and he was fucking getting cheeky with my wee bread like so try to just oh, come on me man and all that and my wee bread's quite polite like Stevie's not really a confrontational guy mm-hmm. and I was like here mate fuck off kind of just raging with me and I, I get dead protective from my wee bread eh? so I was like fucking just getting ra- I, I, this was years and years ago but I was absolutely raging <laughs> proper lost it at the guy and it nearly turned into a fight literally just before my wee bread went out to fight it's funny Aye, uh, yeah, it's a, a crowd fight in the walkout. That would be, I'm uh, sure it's not the first time at a regional show, but no. I, I, that's just one of the things that happen at regional shows in terms of uh, with the bars and drunk people and that. I guess you just get just get used to it a bit. Um, yeah. But the, the the show itself, we'll obviously, talk about about your match in a moment or two. Mm. Um, so we'll come to the the actual fights as well. So you had you had obviously Camille fighting. Uh, you had Keir fighting and uh, Craig. Craig. Yeah. Aye, so uh, thoughts on the, on the fights? Talk, obviously, Camille's fight first. Camille fought uh, Fraser Hurst. Uh, uh, it was a great. I think I was probably the best fight on the night. It was a good fight. Mm-hmm. Um, we knew Fraser was at, has been at one of my seminars. I think he, he's been rolling at Craig's a wee bit. We knew I've seen him fight. Before. I actually think Fraser's maybe the best guy at that weight in Scotland. He's he's got good wrestling, good top game. He's always in shape and stuff and. We knew going in, we knew going in, it was going to be Camille's hardest fight, and and drilled into him the whole time. You're probably not going to stop this guy in nine minutes. Aye. Uh, don't even bother trying to submit him in in nine minutes. He's going to be hard to sub, and just a lot of your game plan involves using the fence with him. To be honest, because mm-hmm. um, he's a, he's he's good at wrestling in space. Um, and then the other thing was like, whoever got on top was going to win that fight because they're both top game kind of heavy guys um, I thought it was an excellent fight Camille done really well he's had some issues before with his, with his confidence and stuff like that um, but he's on like a, a two or three fight winning streak now and he's getting better and better and more confident that so it, was, it was a really good fight um, Camille for what I remember I need to say it back but Camille won round one and two and Fraser mm-hmm. had a, a strong round three but Camille was still in there at the end he actually reversed him and got a takedown with about 30 seconds left but it's one of the fights, I think if the guys fight a lot, it, it could go either way. They're, they're quite yeah, similar right. in some ways. Um, Camille had the better of the, the exchanges on the feet with his jab and stuff, but it was a good fight for both guys, like a hard fight. Both of them have come away unscathed, but the, Camille will learn massively for that fight. Um, and his, his confidence should skyrocket now because Fraser's on a really good, good uh, point. Yeah, I guess that's one of the things I was going to say, obviously, we. Uh, Fraser being as good as he is I mean that can only and get Camille getting the win uh, it should just obviously help his confidence and hopefully help him as a fighter going forward I take it that's what you're looking for as a coach as well yeah you're always like, as well as developing them kind of with their techniques and physically as athletes you, you need to be developing them mentally and confidence is a big big factor with that mm-hmm. but it was it was good for him just getting that challenge and knowing going into this fight like this is a it's, it's a dangerous opponent it's the best guy you've fought to date but we believe that you're ready for this challenge. It's, it came at a good time for him, I think. Um, yeah. And he's, he's keen to get out again now. I think he wants that on top belt at, at middleweight now. Cause <laughs> That's awesome. There's, there's not really a lot of other good guys at that weight in Scotland. Like mm-hmm. you were saying, Fraser's probably the better guy. There's a guy up in Aberdeen, I think. Um, but it was a good fight. Like it was, I, I was happy he got adversity 
Aye. And he came through it because he never had his own way at all in it. Like he got took down and he, got, he had to get a reversal and he got sweep, he got the sweep in the second round. And then for two two minutes and a bit, uh, round three, he was getting controlled and held against the fence, and he's he's, he's persevered and got through it. So it was a it, it was a really good fight for Camille. That it was a fight I was worried about going into, which mm-hmm. I, I maybe said to the coaches in here, um, and I, I drilled into it. Camille, you can't be in the bottom, you can't be in the bottom, whoever's on the bottom is going to lose, but um, he, he done really well on the night, I'm, I'm what happy for him. And did you get a chance to catch that fight? I watched it, aye, aye. it was immediately after mine I'm sure. Yep. Right. Aye, I just sat and I actually sat, sat and watched the cage side, I love Camille, he's one of my one of my favourite folk in, in the gym, uh, it was good to see him win. And he's, uh, we went to Naga together a few years ago and mm-hmm. just a great guy, eh? just a, a really genuine guy, uh, Really hard working person, aye, um, and it was good to see him win. Actually, I've no, I've I watched a, a like maybe a minute of the fight, and it was just uh, it was getting live streamed. Yep. I've not, I've not actually seen Camille fight uh, live. I think I've I've seen him grapple. Did he know grappling Forza at one one point? I've something's telling me he did. I could be mistaken though, because I've got a heat like mm. I, I don't a think level. so. I don't think he's done a lot of that stuff. <laughs> he's done. He competed in the gi a fair bit. Um, at white belt and then I think he's competed at blue belt but no no like like oh but you enter a class and turn up and see who's there on the day type Aye. of thing um, he's where's he fought he's fought at Budo I think he's has he fought on top for he fought on top previously Aye. I think but so, I don't know why I'm thinking for some reason I can remember a Forza and there was a no gi maybe a thing they had and a, a crush war Camille there's a guy that looks like him there's a guy that looks like him actually that right. done that I, know, right. I think I know who you're talking about right I, I apologise mm-hmm. and I've got him mixed up mm-hmm. is that like an under 80 kilo tournament or something mm-hmm. maybe Aye, it, was a, it was a show open weight where, one Aye, it was, it was weight a show one, where they, they were giving away the yellow car as well right. as a, oh, right. as a raffle <laughs> sorry I'm kicking the feet I thought we were just playing footsie Aye, that's right and uh, obviously the other the other fight main event was um, Keir Harvey I, I kind of got to miss that one because I was looking forward to see, cool fight. seeing how Keir obviously coming out and, and fighting his first fight uh, since he's joined the gym he's obviously took his time and no wanted to jump into anything, anything too quick um, he's fighting obviously a pretty pretty game opponent and uh, Kev Loban um, what, was your, what was your thoughts on the main event fight? Uh, it was a good fight. It was like you know what you're getting with Kev Loba now. We, mm-hmm. uh, we, again, when we're planning for it, we're like, he's going to be there to the end. He's, he's going to, he's <laughs> going to get you shit out of the way, and he's he going to fucking <laughs> play to the crowd. He's, <laughs> you, you can hit him with everything, and he, he's going to be there. Fair, fair um, play to the guy. Too, I, I, I love watching him fight. I, I really enjoy watching him fight because there's a lot of guys that get into these fights who've got all the technique in the world and stuff but they've not got something that that kid's got and mm-hmm. he'll turn up and fight fucking anyone um, and I admire that about people like he's he's a he's just a wee, he's a small guy like he's, mm-hmm. he can make he could probably fight at 57 see the 61 but he, you can see him like he's like one of the wee dogs who's just like f- <laughs> he'll fucking go at you if if somebody says like get him but he had his kid that I didn't know he's he was due a baby you know, and then uh, that's, apparently that's, he's had his kid that day and then rocked up that's and I was like smart. what the fuck is he doing and it was here? his birthday day uh, he that, what, uh, he's just loving life uh, man and I, I like the fact obviously I've never seen the fight but I like the fact um, I know he was there was a bit of shit talking going on in there and I feel we at least I, I quite I like some shit talking and I dislike others. I, I hate the stuff that I feel like the Colby Covington force stuff, but mm-hmm. he just seems like a guy that's just, he's just saying what's coming to his mind mm-hmm. and he's not doing it for either or other reason just to, just to say it because it's bottom into his head. The two of them were, were talking to each other right. pretty much the entire fight. Keir, Keir, Keir does that. that as well. <laughs> Keir's good at that too. Um, but uh, they, they totally respected each other as well. You mm-hmm. can tell at the end, like, uh, and even in between the rounds. Um, but it was a good fight. The, di- the difference is... Keir's, Keir's quite a complete MMA fighter now and, mm-hmm. and Kev no disrespect but his striking's really good he's like he's, his striking's always been good um, his hands are excellent his kickboxing's good and stuff and his, his jiu-jitsu is not too bad as well but his game's pretty gappy it's like yeah and, and you kind of get away with that now eh? like the, the, there was gaps there with the wrestling and, and his decision making sometimes with jiu-jitsu there was a bit where I think Keir was on his back and and Kev's elbow on the fight and stuff <laughs> but he, he defended like the, the choke well he hand fight well and, and stuff like that but you can you can see like Keir, Keir was just like he's got a really modern kind of style um, and you can see the difference in Keir now if they, if they, even if you look at his first pro fight before he came here mm-hmm. 
his game's starting to fill out and he's starting to get a bit of an identity about how he how he wants his game to be and where it's going to go and progress to. Um, which is that's important. Like you, you really should have that by the time you're, right. you're starting off as a pro. The amateur ranks is for that. Um, and he's adding to his game as mm-hmm. well. You can see he's he's got some new wrinkles to his game, which is cool. But it was a it was a good fight. Um, again, opponent wise, at, at the right time Aye. for 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 Kier. It was a fight again. If he'd if he took it lightly or made a mistake, he could have got caught um, pretty mm-hmm. easy. Like Kev beat Peter McCaffrey as a, an amateur. Yeah. Um, he's he's got the potential to catch guys. He's, he's quite a good run at amateur. Actually, beat a couple of good guys. Yeah. Um, that, that everybody thought he was going to lose to and it was just because he turns up in his, his game mm. but it was a, an enjoyable fight I look forward to watching it back actually um, I spoke to Kev actually after it I like, congratulate him about having the baby and stuff like that and, and he was mentioning about maybe coming through to do some work here so he'd be a good guy to have in for there's a there's a bunch of good get, like pro and, and solid amateurs about that weight we, we look and, and Keir obviously and then Logan uh, and stuff like that so he would be like a good guy to have in he's he's got a ton of experience striking that, that most guys don't even know about like sparring with pro level boxers and yeah. and stuff like that so and in yeah. regards to some of the shit talking what was what can you fill us in on some of the stuff that was being said Ke- Keir's quite funny with his he uh, just goes you'll be done in one mate who <laughs> 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 was on that uh, one K- Keir was uh, Kev was in our corner at one point getting hit in the face and then we shout I think he done like the Ric Flair woo and then he was like <laughs> fucking you hit like a lassie you hit like a lassie he kept saying then Keir's like Keir's got me in like a wrist right just punch him in the face like I can do this all day I can. <laughs> and then another point he was kind of Keir was on his back and he was looking at him I don't know what was said but I turned around and Mark Ewan was just pissed he said what I was like what, what did he say what did he say and he's like he's just talking shit the whole time he's like fucking he's half his head man oh, and the wee guy Jordan fought the wee Irish guy oh, <laughs> he didn't really shut up oh pa- Padre is that Padre Gohanan <laughs> or he flipped me off and then told me shut, shut up I saw that um, what was that what was that you were saying like he's, he's what was it you says again I, I think he tried he tried some submission or something I can't mean but I was like there's nothing there Jordan there's nothing there he's like you shut your fucking mouth and I was like you concentrate on getting him happy and by the way for, for them that wants to see that I've seen that video it is available out there I think it's on YouTube um, I'm sure it's I apologise for murder it's like Padre uh, McGee or something some Padre McGee that's it, that's it. He, came yeah. in, he came in and was dead cool after it but I was like that's that Conor McGregor effect they're right. fucking just giving me shit too, so, many, too many guys at that man but I mean like I say with that sort of stuff some guys are just it's not you can tell it's mm. natural just the way they the way they say it, it's natural and I can sort of get on board with that and, so, and like the early Conor McGregor stuff was I found it was funny and it was it was witty and I quite enjoyed it it's when it starts just getting pure nasty and I just didn't get it like I, I think you're, you're dealing with MMA fighters a lot of guys that get into MMA because they're not quite right in the heat do you mm-hmm. know what I mean like a lot of guys get into MMA because they'd be in jail if they didn't do it and when people were to talk shit on the internet like mm-hmm. these are people that might actually Actually drive to your gym and beat the shit out of your right mm. outside your gym do you know what I mean like that's sometimes what goes through folks heads I'm not saying it's went through my head yeah. <laughs> but people are too cheeky on the internet Aye. and it shouldn't be like that and uh, and too cheeky in general again it was, MMA is meant to be about respect and I there's a mutual agreement you're going to fight each other and that but I just feel like when people uh, get that way they, they, they need to be well prepared to back it up Aye, yeah. aye. I suppose that's the main thing. I guess that's why when you hear it in a fight like that between Ke- yeah, Keir cool. and Kev, because cool. the two of them are already there was beating, respect beating between each them other. Too, like, you can see it in the fight. Um, aye. It, 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 was, it was really respectful, um, but it, it, there was nothing with any malice. So they were just trying to mm-hmm. maybe force the other guy to commit to something and, and make a mistake, but... It, it, it's got a time and a place, I think, isn't right. it? See, I quite, I, I'd go back to, remember uh, Darren Till and Masvidal were going to fight? Mm. There was a respect there, but there was also, wasn't he, wasn't he like shit talking? Both of them were basically saying, it was quite intense, face, I thought, But it was basically saying, I said, I'm, Going to try and knock you out, I'm going to knock you out. <laughs> but both guys meant it, and you Aye. know that's what was going to happen. Obviously, one guy yeah. won, one guy lost. But but that's sort of that's sort of how it goes. And um, the other the other fight I wanted to mention is obviously Reese McEwen. I think I had it's well, good. Well, 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 sit down. He's obviously just uh, went down and fought um, Lewis Lee Scott down 
d- down south. Uh, mm-hmm. for, first round finished, he caught it, I believe he got, was it a kick caught? If you've been tell, talking me through it, because obviously I wasn't I, there. I never seen it, I spoke to him after, I think. Right. Did, did he get he get dropped with a punch maybe? He got took down. I thought he got his kick caught or something like that. He was kicking and got through. And I think, uh, maybe poor fight IQ for Arm Towns coming down into his guard. Mm-hmm. Reese just got his purple belt. Yeah, uh, off of Ingo Martin and I roll with Reese once or twice a week. He's excellent. Eh? Mm-hmm. The kid's jiu jitsu is really good. His wrestling's good and stuff. Um, and I think rushing into his guard like that, obviously he got, he got arm barred. I think didn't he? So yeah, first first time I ever met Reese, he came up to me and says, "Mark, can I roll with you?" And then I always know somebody's going to be good if they're going to do that because mm-hmm. you know, uh, you know, he's a white belt or something at the time. And mm-hmm. he's, he came right up and just said, can I roll with you? He's his game is in and well, he, he just wants to That's what he's like at the grip push the days are, man. Like a roll. It's like brown belt, brown belt, brown belt, black belt, but like Paul's in, black belt, black belt, go back to the brown belts. He's like, you can see him lining up the hardest guys in the room and he's he's like, he's just a wee guy. He's like 23. And he, that That's a, uh, like Craig's saying, that's, that's a, a, a good trait in young mm-hmm. guys because you'll get other guys who do the exact opposite and they'll hand pick and they're looking at the window to see who, and all the other guys are trying to pick guys and they'll have a wee looking scan and see who's left whereas they guys are like I want the hardest rounds mm-hmm. like line them up type of thing mm-hmm. um, and, and generally for what I've seen anyway is anybody who does that tends to do pretty well yeah um, and Reese is somebody that I've managed to I've watched his fight uh, fight quite a few times and he's somebody that seems to just be getting better as well Aye, he impresses mm. me almost probably probably one of the most impressive mm-hmm. uh, people I've ever watched um, for amateurs and stuff as well just yep. his attitude his overall conduct outside the cage and inside the cage and mm-hmm. work ethic and everybody speaks really highly everything that he's doing he's got yep. the right people around him as well Um I, I, like, I like seeing him do well. Uh, it seems like a oh, lad that's got his, he's got his head screwed on and he sort of knows knows where he's going and he kind of knows how he wants to get there as well. And I think he's definitely Scott. He's somebody that's got a, that seems to have a bright future. He obviously never one hundred percent know, um, but it seems like somebody that's got a really bright future ahead of him as well. Yeah. Um. So I so overall thoughts on the show then enjoyed enjoyed the show everything about it. Uh, it was good uh, to be back on it and stuff. Um, Hopefully they, they can keep it regular and, and try right. and keep that standard up. It'd be nice if they got more of the pro guys on. Yeah. Um, and maybe, I don't know what the ticket deal was that time for the guys, but maybe make it a wee bit more accessible for the, the fighters to, to make a bit of commission off the tickets would be decent for them. Ah, yeah, absolutely. And obviously moving for the MMA side <laughs> of the, the Art of Combat show, we had uh, uh, the bout in between. Funny you were mentioning over in Ireland all the SPG guys because it was an SPG Morega, uh, Morega you fought uh, Kevin McElwain. Yeah. Um, aye, so it's a match that happened a while ago um, and it was like a pretty, pretty weird match. Like uh, our brackets got merged and stuff. So, um, it was IBGF rules, so I was just really keen on the the factors and the the different kind of factors in the match that it was going to be sub only, um, fifteen minutes I liked, um, eighty kilos as well. So that's kind of meeting the middle weight for both of us, and mm-hmm. he usually competes about eighty five. My ideal weight to compete is seventy five. Mm-hmm. Um, so we kind of met in the middle there, which was brilliant. Um, Aye, it was it was an interesting match. It was a bit of wrestling defense to start. I was trying to have try to have a wee bit of fun and stuff at the start. Maybe using some of my karate. I've been working that a lot lately. It's been working well for me in competition. Um, so I was doing a bit of that, and then really spent most of the first half of the fight probably defending takedowns, and then eventually getting taken down. I think the first time I got took down, um, I wrapped up a nice high guard. Um, was was actually pretty close to. I was in quite a deep stage at uh, Google Plata. Um, at the start um, Kev was keeping his neck tight which is just actually highlighted to me that I need to get better in some of these spots because there's a lot of people in the world that if you get that far into that zone it's game over you know it was it was pretty like there's a lot of people in the world that, that, that are really good at that high guard game that if you get that far into that you're, you're already done yeah. you're, you're either getting armbars you're getting something's going to happen to you for there um, and I've only recently kind of found that out by rolling with guys that have got really really good high guard games um, the next significant thing I popped back to my feet after um, after he got out that popped back to my feet he managed to take me down again the second take down he got me was a really good take down because he landed in side control um, immediately went to knee on belly and then went to 
I actually uh, enticed them into mount because mm-hmm. I, I, I'm pretty confident in my, my mount escapes in all positions. So sometimes I actually prefer just to escape from there. Um, and pretty much as soon as he stepped into mount, I was managed to wrap up a leg lock. But when I wrapped up the leg lock, I left my right leg exposed for a toe hold. Um, and I'd injured that about three weeks ago, rolling with Stevie just before he went on Polaris. Um, and it had popped and he kind of said to me that that popped when we were rolling and I just wanted to continue rolling. So I said it didn't pop at the time, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> even though, uh, but uh, you don't, you don't really feel things like that at the time. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? So I was like, it, I, did, I wasn't being brave or anything. I just didn't feel it at the time when it, when it did pop. But then the next day it was like, it was yeah. sort of touch and uh, pretty much for the, you know, the coming weeks it was sort of touch. Um, so I knew it was already pretty bad. Um, and also in terms of like hierarchy, a uh, danger, uh, the heel hook does a lot more damage in, in my opinion than what the, the toe hold does mm-hmm. so I was quite willing if he was you know going to wreck my ankle I was quite willing to pop his knee you mm-hmm. know so um, so it, it wasn't to the point where it was painful or anything like that you know it was I, I mean I knew it had popped because it was already gubbed but um, I thought I could finish my heel hook mm-hmm. and he, I think he abandoned it to be honest because I was getting a decent bite on the leg and he, we spoke about it after and he'd said you know it was pretty close on the on the knee as well um, and I just used it to get top position um, so you know usually if you're if the leg stuff's not going your way you can that's one of the good things about leg locks is you can you can attack sweep off them and then take top position off them I don't think I, enough people do that you know mm-hmm. all you have to do is elevate the leg and you're pretty much guaranteed you get top position so it's something I use a lot for that um, so I took top position this is about six minutes left in the match at this point um, and, and to be fair to him he did say he actually went that pop mate <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, Giles kind of was there at the same time and I think Giles was like what <laughs> like what's going on and uh, I was like shit Giles is going to stop this event because this has popped and I went mine's isn't he popped it must be yours that's what I said, I said, it's, <laughs> not, I said it's not mine it must have been yours for my heel hook okay, and then I was like let's, let's, just, let's keep going you know and just kept going um, but I was talking to him I think it was the day I was talking to him and he actually said no you had me convinced it was maybe mine so I must have said it quite convincing because I was Aye. like nah it wasn't mine mate it must have been yours and just kept going and then but I knew I knew it was popped do you know what I mean and uh, I came up and I was in his guard and I just thought I thought to myself I knew I could get a leg entry whenever I wanted from guard um, and I thought to myself it'd been pretty other than the takedowns you know I had had my go-go plat attempt at that point we'd had one leg attempt each he had got two takedowns um, he had probably controlled most of the cage pressure but I'd also stuffed at least three or four takedowns mm-hmm. um, so I was thinking it was like fairly close um, going in under a sub only rule set IBGGF I would have been behind a good, good right. few points you know I'd have been behind about four or six points or something like that but um, in sub only rule set it was pretty it was pretty close up until that point and then I had six minutes of top control or about five minutes of top control um, you know he didn't want to be in the bottom mm-hmm. he was trying to get up he was trying to sweep he was trying to do stuff and I shut it down yeah. um, but at the same time I had opportunities to pass um, he's guard at that point but I didn't I didn't want to pass because I thought if I do anything here and it ends up was both standing this might be a bit dodgy right. like I knew in my head that I might be a bit funny for walking you know Um so I was just thinking, right, control him and then attack his legs in the last minute and then at least, no matter what happens, mm-hmm. then it's another sub-attempt. So that's three sub-attempts if you get that. Um, I never really got... I, I did do that, you know. I managed to implement that that last kind of minute game plan. Really there, I should be trying to pass and submit. But because of the kind of doubt in my head, I stayed and I was like, that, that, that should be enough to win it. Um and then went for the leg attack in the last 30 seconds. The last leg attack wasn't that close, to be fair. You know, it was just a, a good position. It wasn't, um, and I never really got a chance to put much threat on in time. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I probably over, overestimated how much time I had. Um, and then I thought I won, you know. Um, yeah, I... Got up and raised my hands and thought I'd done enough. I knew it was close, you know. Um, but I probably felt like that because of the, how the last, because I had won the last part of it, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and he had definitely won the first part of it. No. Aye. Um so under sub on the real set I thought I'd won. Um you know, I knew that under IBGGF he would have won. If it was MMA I would have probably won. You know, if there was globs mm-hmm. involved, I spent you know, a good chunk of maybe six minutes top position compared to one minute of his or something like that. Um mind you his takedowns would have scored high. So 
it was pretty it was pretty close either way it was pretty right. close you know um, it could have went either way and you got the decision so I was a bit you know, I was a bit doing about it but I've always I've always 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 believed that if you don't finish if you get 15 minutes to finish something you can't finish them in 15 minutes you, then you don't deserve to win anyway right. so I don't, I don't I don't believe I deserve to win anyway because I had 15 minutes to put them away and I didn't do it so, so. Does, I, don't, I don't care after that you know, like aye, aye. If, and, unless it was absolutely dominant Mm-hmm. Then, then, like my match on Grapple Fest, there was no way I could have lost. Aye. You know, it was absolutely dominant for the start. There was nothing. There was never a position I was in any trouble. Mm-hmm. You know, for, in the ten minute match. Um, but with Kev, it was back and forth, and he controlled a lot of spots, and he and he got a lot of stuff off. So, you know, to say one would be fair. So, know. so kind of for that mindset, then you can sort of live with how the decision went. Aye, like aye. Do you know it, it does? It does bug me because then there's that wee bit of doubt where I say to myself, "Well, that last five minutes, I never made the most of." It. Mm-hmm. You know, I could have passed. I could have, could have, could have, should have done a lot of stuff. But the doubt with my ankle kind of um, played a part a wee bit. But, um, and it was a quite an important match to me. I really wanted to win. You know, <laughs> so I was. I felt shit. You know, I felt shit that I didn't didn't get the W. But uh, but I w- would have been happy if I just edged on him. No, definitely Aye. not. You know, if people were saying, oh, or like even if the match happened the same, every said I won. I wouldn't really be happy because I didn't dominate him. I didn't really do much to him, you know. And I'm pretty sure he probably wasn't that happy that he didn't really do much to me. Ah, yeah, that's that. And I guess for you, you know, it's, is it just a case you try to let the let the ankle heal up and prepare for the the big life change and events that's coming? Aye, aye. Like we spoke about that earlier. Aye. Um, you know, pretty pretty much consciously been trying to compete as much as I possibly can, just uh, in preparation for being a dad. Because I want to take time out to. Spend time with my kids. I think that's like the most important thing that can happen. Absolutely. To you. Um, so for me, you know, I've done a shitload of competing. You know, I probably had about hundred grappling matches now. I've um, had twenty fights um, and, and a load of other shit. You know, in, in, in years and years in, in the gym. And unlike a lot of guys, I see a lot of guys that are like, "Oh, I've been training for ten years, or I've been training for whatever." But they've, you know, they've took two year off in between, or they've took mm-hmm. a year off in between. I've never really stopped training, so. Um, and I'm not going to stop training either, right. to be honest. Even with this, I'll still be on the mat doing stuff. I'll be drilling, um, mm-hmm. but I'm, competing takes more out of you. You know, you need to be in the gym training six, seven days a week. Um, so maybe I'll go about three or four days a week, um, which is and and but just not be competing. You know, but I'll still be getting better. I'll still be improving. Uh, be working new stuff. It'll give me a chance to pull back and add some new tools to my game. Mm-hmm. Pra- practice some different attacks and stuff as well, mm-hmm. and then come back better when I. I, I mean, I'm saying I, I said I was going to no compete for a year, but we'll see how that goes. You know what I mean? Ah, uh, well, I you. I guess you, do, you just need to wait. You just need to wait to do you ones here and, aye. and and see how things how things play out. <laughs> you might be back soon, and you think you might not. <laughs> well, aye, that's that's it. I mean, some I, I love I love uh, I love good matches. Like I love tests. Aye. If somebody says to me, "You can get this guy," I'm like, "Oh fuck, that sounds good." Like I don't know. I like no no if I can beat somebody. Aye. If somebody says, "Oh, you want to go against this guy," I'm like, "Brilliant! I don't know if I can beat that guy." Let's do it. That's what I like today. You know, I, I don't I don't like going against people that I think I can beat. Oh, well, you don't know what the future holds. You just need to wait and, I guess, wait and see what happens. Um, <clears throat> and just one quick thing I wanted to uh, talk about before we wrap up tonight. We've got a big card coming up in Dublin, the 27th, uh, Bellator card. So we've got a uh, card headlined by James Gallagher. He'll be taking on uh, Carl Eleanor. Uh, we've got Peter Queely taking on Ryan Scope. Um, we've got MVP taking on Richard Keeley. Uh, so obviously three SPG guys at the top of the cards. I think it's of all get very, very difficult nights. Um, I guess the main event's the first one. I mean, uh, Cal Eleanor, uh, James Gallagher. I've, I've said I'm not. I'm no. I'm quite overly. I'm quite surprised that this fight happened. I wasn't sure that they would take this fight against Cal because I think it's a sort of almost low reward, very high risk fight uh, for James. Um, were you surprised when you heard this fight announced that uh, it was going to be Cal and James in the main event? Mm, a wee bit. I was surprised they took it. I think mm-hmm. he tries to pick his fights at um, James Gallagher a wee bit, but mm-hmm. um, I like I like Cali. I think yeah. he's a great guy. I, I just really like him as a person and as a fighter. Eh? Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody definitely. I've got a lot of time for. Him. I spoke to Cal about it, and when he said he was getting a fight, I've, I'm chuffed for him. I'm glad he's getting a massive opportunity, and it is a massive opportunity headline a big card like that and if you can get in there and beat James Gallagher it, it really really puts Cal on the map a guy who's who's fought very very tough opponents uh, notably obviously over in the AFC um, he's no guy who's had an easy road um, you watch a lot of James 
I watch a lot of both of the, I like both mm. of them as fighters. Mm. Uh, I didn't, I'm, I'm not really big on the way James is, like, his social media and shit, but I didn't really believe that's him. I think mm. he's, he's obviously seen Connor do that and he, mm-hmm. he copies him and I know he gets a lot of stick for that, but the kid can fight, like, when it, yep. like, when you strip all that stuff away, the, he gets in there and he fights. Um, his jiu-jitsu is frightening. Um, I know John's, John's always spoke really highly of him, which the only other guy I can remember John speaking that highly of was Connor mm-hmm. um, in all the years I've known him. But it's a, it's a good fight. Cal's, Cal's brilliant as well. Mm-hmm. He's excellent. I mean, seeing him coming up to Glasgow to fight Aiden, and Aiden's really good. Yep. And Cal was, was, was tremendous that night, and I've followed him since. Um, that team they've got, an, uh, Andrew Fisher's team, is maybe one of the most underrated teams in Europe. Oh, it's, got, killers, man. it's a great team. Um, Scopes with him, the team. Aye, Scopes, Scopes there. Yeah. Phil De Fries is there. He's a KSW yep. champ. That it's just a Lewis Monarch and, mm-hmm. and Fisher himself. It's like mm-hmm. it's an excellent team. Um, yeah. With big t- for the heavyweights as well. With, with Callum Cook and, and Tony Mustard and stuff, but they don't get enough recognition. That team. Um, but it's that, that's a great fight. It's a, it was worthy of a headline fight as well. I mm-hmm. think. A lot of people maybe haven't seen Cal before, so yep. they're, they're in for a, a surprise. But it's a, it's an intriguing fight. It's, a, it's an excellent, excellent fight. I, I guess that's where my surprise comes through with them making the, the main event. And it is, it's obviously, especially regionally UK, people are going to know Cal. Um, but then if you look at the the audience James Gallagher's got in terms of out in America and stuff like mm. that, obviously with the connections to SBG, because um, you see some comments online and stuff like that, and um, you can see the wider audience out with the UK doesn't know who Cal is. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess that's where I was coming from in terms of, mm. I was surprised we were going to take the fight, because Cal's a really good fighter, but he doesn't have a massive, massive name. I think win, lose or draw, they'll know who is after the fight. Yeah, but, absolutely. Um, like the diehard guys will know who he is. Like the, the actual guys who study the game will know exactly who he is. Um, and it, it's just a good fight. Mm-hmm. Um, St- but stylistically, too, I think uh, Cal trains to beat guys like that. I think, I think he's been fighting a lot of guys that have that style that yeah. want to grab you, that want to take you down, and want to you know try and take your back. I think he's fought a few guys like that. Aiden, um, that's what Aiden's, that's what Aiden's game is. Aiden's a lot of guys. brilliant. Yeah. Aiden's excellent at it. Um, and that's a, he's a bigger version. He's, mm-hmm. a, he's a, a physically a bit more uh, yeah, a problem than, than James but it's such a good fight it's a really good fight it's, it's two young guys probably not even in their prime yet yeah. um, and they're getting a big stage so I'm, I'm looking forward to watching it uh, and, uh, the other one obviously I know we've got the MVP one which is probably uh, one a Who's lot of people fighting? are talking about he's fighting Richard Keeley so we've got MVP against Keeley. Obviously, the back and forward there is uh, the MVP's point of view. Richard Keeley's almost talked his way into this fight, and and uh, <laughs> obviously Ke- Ke- Keeley feels that like MVP MVP's not getting paid so, enough because he's black. Yeah, uh, I will. Oh, aye, aye. What an idiot, man. So, uh, yeah, what's your what's your thoughts on that one? How how do you see that fight going? Or what, what do you think? I think it's a it's a hard problem for Richard, but. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, he's taking a chance isn't he like if he beats him and he's capable of beating him Aye. then he it's almost like two years worth of work you've skipped mm-hmm. so he might not have to take four or five fights to get to that fight like in, fighters are only going to turn that down if you come and give him a chance you're going to fight in, in your home city in a big show your co-main event against a guy who for years was getting talked up as, as being this prospect but mm-hmm. he's only really fought Paul Daly and, and Lima and Lima absolutely yeah you know, decapitated him. But MVP was doing not too bad in that mm-hmm. first round. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the daily fight was a bit of a pull, pull in the fight as, as mm-hmm. good as it should. So I, I think it's obviously a, a jump up in level for Richard. But one thing you're definitely going to get with those Irish guys, are, they're, they're hard to beat in Dublin out with that crowd. They're, yeah, they're I... fucking raised. They, they train like a tribe. Like they, they, they get together and they're like, right, this night in Dublin. I've seen it there with the UFC and I fought in Cade over in the... In, the Point Arena in Dublin uh, back in the day and we were kind of me and Paul, I was with Paul McVeigh so we were kind of, and we were, we got to kind of feel it because we were in with the home team not we were in with the SPG guys and that and, and it was like a right gang mentality they like no cunts coming into, our, into Dublin to beat us and mm. I think uh, I think Richard will have that on his yeah. side and I think he'll, he'll proper make a fight yet whether mm. he whether he can deal with that that style and, and stuff is another matter 
Aye, uh, because MVP, obviously, that, <coughs> that, that kind of what elevated him was, remember, obviously, that cyborg knockout. Mm-hmm. Uh, the neat of the temple, that seemed to put him up. Obviously, I wasn't too keen on throwing pokeballs in an MMA cage after that. That seemed a bit weird. But, yeah. um, uh, it's, it's, it's definitely, I think it's the, the same sort of applies for Richard Keeley's that applies to Cal Eleanor. It's yeah. a massive opportunity. It's a chance, eh? Aye, that's it. And you almost go into that fight and it's, like, it's almost like a win-win for you, isn't it? It doesn't set them back if they lose. Mm-hmm. Aye. Um, they can go away and they're both young, can rattle out wins and, and they'll be back in that point, like before you know it type of thing. If MVP loses, then... And that's a massive setback for him. I think Richard's maybe only three and zero or something. Or he's, mm. he's got like less than five pro fights. I think he's he's dangerous, but like he's he's intense. That that guy, he's quite an intense guy. So, um, a bit like that guy at the weekend. You see the UFC. The wee, uh, what's his name again? Um, oh. he fought. He fought the Ferreira. Oh God, Jesus! I, I, the, wee, the wee dude for Canada. I thought that was amazing. Yeah. And he was like, oh, significantly, yeah. significantly uh, smaller than him. What's his name? I know Donnelly, is it Brandon Christian Donnelly or something uh, Tristan, 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 Tristan Connolly Tristan Connolly Connolly aye someone aye, aye. Aye. so for a minute I thought you were talking about uh, we'll come back to the Dublin car in a minute uh, uh, but I was going to mention that uh, is it Pereira ah, Pereira that's what I'm talking about Pereira aye. doing backflips he's backflips and, and the wee guy Tristan Connolly done him aye it's, mm-hmm. it's just I mean what a I, hero story though that's what's amazing about MMA do you know what I mean like think about that guy <laughs> he's probably he's 16 and 6 that guy right so he's probably went through his career he's maybe probably probably right off the UFC 140 the grand he made Aye, was it? Wow. Aye, because he got the, he got the fight of the night bonus, and then cause Pereira missed weight. He got the he got 10%. his 50, he got his fifty as well. Wow. Uh, I, that, I mean, that's you love you love hearing stuff like that, but don't you? Because I mean, that's I awesome. Know, I, I think you well, you know yourself what it's like as an MMA fighter. Just what, what, you're surviving on peanuts, trying to get an opportunity, and then when you get an opportunity, like that, I mean, that's that is a, a UFC a, comes to your home turn and yeah, you, you get thing you know. Yeah, but it's kind of like Danny Henry's story a wee bit. You know what I mean, Danny Henry done that, took that fight when he was injured with no training, pretty much. He was mm-hmm. barely training at the time. It's pretty like pretty impressive. Stevie wasn't far off that. Stevie was like two and a bit weeks or something like, to the aye, ten days, aye. ten aye. days when he got the call and took it. You know what I mean, like a lot of Stevie's burn was due to be brought, born when he got his call for the UFC. And I think he just got back in time to see it, if I remember right, because uh, he had been doing corner on me for a uh, for a for a fight I had done in Newcastle, and mm-hmm. he got and he was on the drink and everything. <laughs> he was on the drink and everything. Then he took it took a fight ten days later. TKO'd the boy. Guess it just tells you when there's an opportunity there, you you grab it with both hands and and take it. Yeah. And uh, obviously, I think I think the, the the toughest fight for the the SBG guys that are going to be on the main card is uh, Peter quayley has got. Ryan Scope, Ryan Ryan Scope just seems to. Sometimes he can start a wee bit slow, but he just seems to have seems to be so dangerous. I, I was I managed to catch him in uh, fighting uh, Patricia mm-hmm. uh, Patricia Pitbull. Uh, that was cool fight. cool fight. A fight I thought he'd lost at first, and then when I watched it back, I thought he'd. I changed my mm-hmm. opinion. Thought he'd won, but uh, that's a really dangerous, really hard fight for Peter Quayley. Scope uh, Scope's one of my favourite fighters. He. I think I've spoke about this before, but he fought, we had a kid who used to train, he was called Chrissy Glover. Um, he trained for about 11 and then he got to about 16 and found girls and stuff and buggered off and left us. But he fought Ryan Scope at a show. They were both 13, I think. We had Graham Turner and, and some other fighters on. Um, and we took them down. It was a no-head contact fight. And uh, they, they probably had the best fight of the night. The two of them were, were trading normal platters with each other, and, and it was incredible. Like, like back then, this was a while ago as well. Like the two of them were the two kids were brilliant, and Ryan well, Ryan went on points, mm-hmm. but you could see then like this kid at that age got confident and and te- his technical ability, and then it, you can kind of just watch him grow and stuff and like, and then he disappeared for a wee bit, and then he goes quiet, and it's like he just rocks up. I mind when ACB came to Glasgow, I was talking to the matchmaker. And we were talking about certain fighters who'd been asking for easy fights and can you get me this guy or like, p- pretty much try to handpick fights. Mm-hmm. And I, went, uh, I was like, all right. And then he went, I wish they were all at Scope. And I was like, oh, what do you mean by that? And he's like, well, Scope messaged me and says, get me the best Russian guy you can find. Aye. And he did. And then he, he smoked that Russian that night. He, he, he beat him. Like, it looked like a, it didn't look like a mismatch, but you could tell like he was, he's something special. Aye. And then every now and again, when you see him, you're like, he's a, he's a, he's a talent. Him. He's, a, mm-hmm. he's a talent that... You don't really see too much in Britain. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know too much about why he's not fought as much as he should have if he's been about for so long. But every now and again, it's like he comes out and reminds you just how good he is. And he done that with the with the pitbull fight. Like I thought he won that fight. Aye, um, I thought that too and much, that's right? one of the best 
that's one of the best guys in the world who's competing against there. So yeah, he's yeah. world class, Ryan Scott, like legit world class. He doesn't get phased by anything. Mm-hmm. He's, like even as a kid, like when I'm saying it, seeing him at 13, yeah, it's yeah. like he almost feels like he belongs on that occasion and he's never phased by, by anything that goes on. So I don't think the... I don't think the Dublin crowd will face him whatsoever. He'll thrive off it. No, he seems any time. I mean, he it, 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 it seems quite stoic and composed. He doesn't. He doesn't speak very much. Doesn't he? I ended up out in a club with him one night. Actually, right. so, yeah. so is that a different Ryan scope you see at a club? Uh, he's, he's quite funny, man. Yeah. Uh, I was a bit of a scope fanboy. Like I thought, I used to watch all his fights. That I was, I was right in him. He was one of the first uh, local fighters I ever thought. He's brilliant. Like, mm-hmm. and uh, first time I seen him was old on the first on top. When he, fought he, Scott he, Ward. he fought Scott Ward and grappling he just dominated him I couldn't believe it mm-hmm. I was like this and he looked so much smaller than Scott Ward which was yep. what confused me um, and I just thought oh yeah that's crazy Ken. I can remember right. just thinking to myself that's crazy and then I've seen him fighting a supremacy show where the boy uh, the boy had fought Dan Hardy or something the guy was a, a bit of a journeyman but it was a tough test for him at the time I think it was early in his pro career and the, the boy tried to get a wee bit funny with him and he, he blew the guy a kiss and knocked him with a head kick just went like the boy tried to throw something out and put the boys' lights right out and finished on the ground and pound. And uh, I, that night we were all out, and he just by chance he ended up in the same club, but he just loved up with a spur man. He was just winching the face off her on. <laughs> Honestly, it looked like he was going to propose or something like that. I was like, and, and, and when I think about he's took an absence, I think it's got to be the girls that got him. Because you could tell he was just like following this bird about like a bad smell and it looked like she was in control. You know what I mean? Aye. So I just thought right away, oh, there's your weakness. He's, he obviously just loves the women, eh? but it's yeah. a fair play. What do you think about the matchup itself? Peter Quayley, Ryan Scope? I think Ryan Scope takes him out clean. Aye. Real easy. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think it's a, a job for him. Aye, Ryan Scope summed it I think. I think he's got a, he's got a big, he's, you don't see much of him from a media point of view, doesn't he do much interviews and that, I've tried but yeah, he doesn't do much interview stuff, mm. he seems like a guy who's a man of, man of few words, um, just gets in there and does the business, um, which I guess what we were talking about earlier is probably something you like in him I would imagine, he's not a big shit talker, he's just getting there and he, he's a really really he's talented fighter. He's a showman fighter. too though, yeah. a lot of time when he's in there he'll do a wee bit, you know what I mean, he's a... Uh, and that time when he blew the boy a kiss and that, I've seen him do a few things like that where I thought, oh, that's good, you're that confident, you're actually a showman. But then is he that type of guy then that that's how he, he, he doesn't speak so much but he expresses himself through his martial arts and his uh, fighting? Aye, because that's what it is, isn't it? Yeah, right, I mean, it's an expression. He, lo- he looks like he's expressing himself when he fights. Like Some guys try too hard and stuff, but when you watch him, it's, everyone's effortless with him and mm-hmm. technically every part of his game's absolutely sound. It's like, he's, he's one of the best guys to watch just because he's, right. he's just flowing a... Um, and he's creative and he's adapting in the moment and stuff like that he's he's like I said earlier he's he's, he's one of the biggest talents that's, that's been in the UK so uh, he's still got time to do so and if he doesn't no, become a legit world champion and stuff it'll, it'll be a bit of a travesty because there's guys winning even cage warriors world titles and stuff like that like who couldn't they touch him no. so hopefully he goes on and he used to fight does heavy, well. Man. He's fighting guys at seventy seven when he he's a, he's small at lightweight. He mm-hmm. looks like he looks like he could make make featherweight. But, but then P- Peter um, Peter's a tough boy, man, as well. Mm-hmm. Like, and he's Peter's an athlete, and again, see how he goes over in Dublin. I didn't think he looked great in the Miles Price fight over in Dublin. I think mm-hmm. some some of the factors with the crowd and the whole Team Khabib versus Team Connor thing and whatever got to him. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if he's if Peter's turns up mentally, then he'll make a fight. Yet. It'll be a, it'll be a good contest, mm-hmm. um, and I hope he does because he is a good fighter. He's a real he's he's a talented guy. He's a, he's, he looks like a hard hard worker. Like everybody I know who speaks to him say that he's in, he's he's no shy hard worker, um, and he's due a break and stuff like that. But um, it'll be inter- it's, it's interesting to kind of see how the. the they chucked some names about him like he was, mm-hmm. it was it was trying to get the fight with Chris Bongard and then it was like they were chucking Terry Brazier's name and then the next thing you're like fuck he's got Ryan Scope no, you're yeah. like it's like it but, might be the same as the MVP thing where you're like if, if Peter beats Ryan right. Scope then because people are aware of Ryan Scope as well maybe not to the same extent as MVP but people are like right Peter's legit fucking well, excellent I would assume they, mo- they obviously must have belief in him if they've taken the fight and he must have belief in himself if he's accepted the fight I think um, he'll fight anybody think, Peter um, he did, mm. I, I think he, he he works that hard he must have belief in himself like, your belief 
is is directly related to the work you put in the gym and the way he works is, is built up a belief system where he probably believes he can he can beat anybody and he's had those fights like going to Russia and stuff like mm-hmm. that before and hostile opposition and, and crowds and he's beat he's beat fighters over there and stuff that he was probably not expected to so I definitely believe he, he thinks he can win and you know what the game's like if if Ryan's maybe underestimated him or, or, or he makes a mistake then, then anything can happen Brilliant, and so that will be Bellator Europe four. And that's on the twenty seventh. Can uh, I see before you wrap? Right. Can I just talk a wee bit about that grapple fest? It was funny, it was in I go his go. show. So it was Chris, it was, uh, it was Chris Thompson's show. So shout out to him. He's doing really well. Mm-hmm. It's on Flow Grappling. Yeah. It's, uh, it's it's blown up quite big now. They're getting mm-hmm. some huge names, but they had uh, they had Ben Eddy over. They had the Mial brothers over. They had uh, Frank Rosenthal, um, a bunch of good guys. A guy Kima Wilk um, for. Poland as well but a bunch of elite level grapplers over um, Eminari was on as well Eminari had his match with Ben Eddie that was really really cool um, so you get, I've got to be backstage with all these guys see being on the show the, the match was cool I, I, I won my match and I was happy but see being backstage and getting to see all the exchanges between people Aye. those Meow brothers warm up for one hour before they compete I know. One hour, I just, and, and, and no, and I sh- no even in slow fashion, just going at each other for an hour. It was, it was cool as anything to watch. She like just watching them rolling for an hour. That's pretty mm-hmm. much what they done, just rolled for an hour straight when they breaks. And then maybe every now and again they stop and go, me, 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 about their foot or something like that. And then start talking. And then they just keep going, boom, right back at it. And, uh, and that, I'm an, I'm an Irish strange cat as well. Like, he, he, he managed to catch Ben in the last, uh, I don't know, 30 seconds or something like that with a, a foot lock. And proper like wrecked Ben's Ben's uh, knee and foot, Aye. and uh, he came up to him after it, and he's like talking to him, and he, he talks all right English, like a wee bit English, and saying to him, right, can I get a picture with you and all that kind of stuff, and um, he was trying to have a conversation kind of thing, just to respect, but then he goes, can I take a picture with you? So he takes a picture of him, and then he says, also I like to take a picture of your face. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> and he gets his phone up, goes right up to that Ben's face, <laughs> and just fucking starts going. Ch- what? Big portrait style close up picture. It was the weirdest thing I've ever it's seen. Just maybe I'm putting opponents on his wall or something like that. Oh, some, I, d- I must be doing weird. something like that, but aye, it was, it was so strange. Serial so killer. strange, so, man. Aye, aye, <laughs> so aye. strange. I get it. So Grapple Fest then, what, what was it like seeing the lovely talent out there then? Brilliant, man. I got I got in the main card there, so like that was that was really cool to get my match. I was meant to go mm-hmm. against Dominic Dillon, who Stevie's right. going against, but uh, Dominic had pulled out, he got injured, hurt his knee, and uh, so they gave me this other guy called Wing Wing Chang. Um, aye, aye. And so I, I went against him, and uh, I thought to myself, I've been doing a lot of karate at the start of my matches lately, just to kind of distract people and make them move, right? And uh, it kind of it just forces a reaction out of folk, and and it's a wee bit funny as well, and helps you kind of just remember it's just a silly grappling match. You know what I mean, <laughs> kind of just helps you remember that actually, can you try and do that in a fight, something will scud you right in the face, aye. but in a grappling match they can't actually do anything about you. Oh, yeah, casting head kick. Aye, there's not aye, exactly. So it kind of helps me with that, and then. Uh, but then I thought to myself, I can't really do this to a Chinese guy. <laughs> do, you know, do, you know, do you know what I mean? Aye, aye, I thought it's a wee aye. bit funny, a wee bit controversial maybe doing this to a Chinese guy, but then he came out to everybody was Kung Fu fighting. So I thought, he can take a laugh, this guy. Do you know aye. what I mean? So I've done a bit of... Um, I bet I done a bit of kung fu in that Tim. Did, um, did you feel it? Did it? Did it get the reaction you wanted? Right, I felt great. It was, it was, and uh, I've been working. I'd been working hard on my cardio, and I got to use mm-hmm. my cardio as a weapon. So I was, I was really happy at it. I, I managed to put a pace on him. I could see Aye. he was tired, and the mere tired, I got. I just had a bigger smile on my face. I got made it into the match, and uh, we had a lot of different exchanges and stuff that were fun. I, I tried some mad stuff, some flying guillotine. I've been doing this flying guillotine over the top of guard and stuff. It's been working. So I had a wee attempt at that and flying kimuras and things like that. I just, I just like having fun, and that thing that. That's the, the whole point in the sub only stuff, you know, you get get a chance to loosen up a wee bit and try things. So would you say then for, for in terms of that show, Grapple Vest, because we've seen them put on more things, do you think that's a show that could get really big in the sub only? Ah, I think I think it's going really fine. It's going to be right up there with Polaris, hundred percent. They've already got the full grappling contract, so Aye. it's streamed over the world and um, they're bringing in the best talent out of the world. Chris Chris does a great job, but he's always a fair guy, he always mm-hmm. matches people really, really well, uh, also. So um, I tagged Stevie in it earlier and uh, I think I tagged Cammy Donnelly as well mm-hmm. but I was just trying to get some exciting guys uh, they're, they're opening up they're, they're actually quite hard to get into Chris only really works with guys that he's worked with before mm-hmm. or somebody that he's worked with that like knows him so Aye. 
Um, I managed to get a couple of my mates on it as well for that that uh, that card there. We got Gary and Dylan on it. Mm-hmm. It was a last minute pull out. We got Dylan took the match in like two minutes, and I got uh, it was like literally last minute notice, and we got Gary on it beforehand. Gary took a match at Gary's mad. He doesn't he doesn't really bother. He took a match at sixty eight kilos. Gary Aye. Gary's like a flyweight pro MMA fighter, so. You know, it's, it's, he was giving up a good bit of weight. You know, it's, right. it's mad. Because but... Gary's always travelling with you and competing and stuff. Aye, like that. Exactly. You always see him when you're so, when you're doing stuff. He had fun anyway, man. He had actually had a really competitive match with the boys, so it was it was cool to see, even though he was getting up like you know over a stone. So so safe, safe to say then down the line we'll see you back on. on Aye, Gary I'm, I'm bummed out. I'm not going to get a chance today. It's mid November, so it's right after the band mm-hmm. comes. But I, I would like to do the next one. I would say that that would be the next time I'd like to compete would be on that show because it's brilliant. And then. A couple of goals that I want to get. I want to try and get on Polaris at some point. Yeah. Stevie just went and showed what he can do in Polaris. Aye. Um, I had a competitive match in the qualifiers, so lost a split decision. I've got better since then. Um, and I'd like to go and uh, make sure that I can get myself on that. So that's that's a goal of mine. I want to, I want to get on Polaris based on merit, not even through the qualifiers. I want to take mm. out enough people that I can get on that. Um, and I'd like to try and win the Nogi Worlds at some point. So that's a just a few goals I've still got left for grappling. So the goals are all there for grappling and obviously MMA. MMA, I just want to have at least one, one or more. two more fights where, you know, I get to enjoy myself, but my, you know, I need to hurry up. I need to get everything. It needs to be right as well. Aye. I'm not going to sit out for that long um, and, and, and go back, you know, unprepared or injured and, mm-hmm. and make an arse of myself. Do you know what I mean? It would be, I'd like to go back and, and be fully prepared and, in the best of shape I know that that happens a lot in MMA but at least not with a major injury Aye. You know? Aye. Um, so I'm not ready to close the door on that yet unfortunately <laughs> still, still slightly open I guess in the, in the immediate future the main thing is you need to get that, that nappy changing technique down that's it just looking that's forward it. to being a dad shout out to Aye. Olivia she's been amazing Aye. with it all to be honest she's been brilliant she's been dead patient so far so it's probably a blessing in disguise with the, the injury to my ankle to be honest so get to be there for her a wee bit more and and I guess above everything else, that's that's going to be the big moment. That's 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 going to be, be a life having changer. a wee boy. It's going to be mad. Get him in the gym as soon as possible. We be being ninja. The only the only advice I'd give you, the difference between wee boys and wee girls, you will have to be dodging streams of pee. Coming directly your face. Coming directly your face. man. You've just said, yeah. what, is it, we man about a year now? Aye, just past a year. That's crazy. Aye, aye. So dodging, dodging streams of pee, dodging sick. I think I get covered in sick and shot on twice a day. So, <laughs> so there, there, there you go. Um, but on that note, thanks very much for coming on, Craig. Thanks and for having us. That's us.